Good morning, everybody. We have another special find. Remember that chainsaw we found at the old ancient Kilmer uh, sawmill site? We have something else very spectacular. But first thing I want to talk about is old tools. That old hammer has been around. I'm not sure. It's been in the family a long time. I still use it, even broken or not. At one point, I wired it and taped it. But, you know what? I think it's time this gets a new handle because this is a nice hammer. But, I'm going to talk about the old tools. In today's world, we can just go out and replace the tool if we break it or if we just lose it or whatever. Or somebody walks off with it. But, you know, a long time ago, Tools were as important as your vehicle is today. You didn't want nothing to happen because they weren't easy to get. And especially tools you made a living with. Well, I want to talk to you about something. We have an old timer that spent a lot of time outside. Believe me. He, he lives the old ways. And... When he walks through the woods or along the rivers, he sees everything. We're blind, most of us. you got to spend a lot of time out in the bush to have your eyes open. Well, this old timer, what I think generated this, and I, I hope I'm right about this. He, he came down to visit me a bit ago, and he walked in at our little chainsaw room here, and he says, oh, my goodness, this is a piece of heaven. He loved our stove. He said, I could just, I just, I could live here. You know what? He probably meant it. He really did. So, he says, I want to show a few things that I've got before I die. I want my kids and their grandkids. And he says, I, I want people in general to understand what they're seeing. Why not to throw this stuff away that's a part of history? Well, back... People think that, uh, where does it start here on the East Coast? Uh, where's our timeline? Okay, everybody looks at 1776. It's before that. It's way before that. It's way, way before this. We had, uh, these were all Indian villages in our area. There's a tremendous amount of Indian stuff found around here. And everybody knows it. It's no secret. And uh, But once in a while you run across some of the original settlers and mountain men some of their stuff this is stuff we're going to be showing a little bit at a time you know these older uh guys they're like this uh, old timer they're kind of setting their ways you don't want to be on video you don't want me to mention his name you don't want to know, let me know where uh, anything really come from what he did say this trap is a work of art. It was made by a blacksmith. He asked me not to compress the springs. I respect that. I'm not going to. Uh, when the river changed course, it went, followed the original channel from where it was in the 17 and early 1800s. Okay, so we kind of know a date there. This trap was found in the channel when it, it jumped into the original track from that timeline. So we have a timeline. Now, if you look, it has concretion on it, the stones. Well, that don't happen over any... This isn't just dirt and gravel. This is actually all conglomerate of stone. And, uh, like, the links in the chain, you know... It's obvious that was blacksmith made. The man that lost his trap probably cried. He probably had to work a month to get one trap. This is a beaver trap. Beaver, by the 1850s, somewhere in there, the beaver were all trapped out. They, uh, the, I believe they come in in uh, early, mid, maybe, 1700s. Well, this is obviously a steel trap, in my eyes. So I'm... This is a wild guess. If any of you know better than me, you tell me. But I'm going to say this probably was 18, late 1700s, early 1800s. Uh, and it's so well made. And the one thing you can't see on camera that even though it's a very nice piece, there's nothing about it that's dead even and perfect. It's just, it's 
it's uh, blacksmith forged. Uh, I, I really appreciate their old timer letting us see this. Uh, this tool a man made his living with, good or bad, I don't care how you feel about it, that's not what this is about. This is his tool from that time in, timeline in his way of life. It was found about 14 feet deep where the river had cut the bank. And uh, it was, I know that it had to have been covered in uh, something like a clay or real heavy silt. There was no oxygen present uh, to speak of. That's why it's in this nice shape. 200 years old. Can you believe it? 200 years old. That's what I'm going to say. And if it's, I know it is. It's not even doubt in my mind it is. I've seen enough old stuff around here. Um. We, we come into this room today, and we had a really strange thing happen. Um, it, it was different. It was just different. And, uh, like, well, what are you doing here? Hi, I'm Chris, the Christmas elf. We have a Christmas elf? Yep. Santa sent me down to help you iron horse build some chainsaws. Really? I'm going to fix your lapel there. How's well, that, Chris? You know, you know us elves, we're like experts with tools. Well, what's, what's the change in the room? I don't understand this. Well, that comes along with the season. When you get an elf, you get a, get a room full of Christmas. Oh, I'm so blessed to have my own Christmas. How long are you going to stay? Do you have much time? you got to get back to the North well, Pole? Well, i got to get back by Christmas Eve because Santa won't want me to load the sleigh. Yeah, you got to do the maintenance and everything on that first, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's cool. He's all set up for all that must be. So we got an elf for a little bit. It, uh, I hear your boss. Yeah, I've seen this right here. He, he sent me a hat. Well, when you do business with people sometimes, and if you're a good boy, you, you get a free hat. So I, I, the old man himself sent me a hat. So I thought, well, seeing how Chris, the Chris himself was here, I'm going to wear it. Um, it looks like that you showed up at a really good time, Chris, the Christmas elf, because I have a lot of sauce to build. I couldn't get parts for a while. Jesse Bills got your saw done. It, that 390, it runs phenomenal. I'm really happy with it. Uh, you're going to be ecstatic. Uh, I can't, I'm going to run it a little more. I'm going to send it back to you. Uh, we got... Now, do we, we're going to be building some 268s and 272s next, Chris. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be uh, doing a little more work in the room here. Uh, we, we're not completely done yet. Uh, Eric, thanks for the stove, man. This thing kicks butt. Eric, you're a good man. Hope to see you soon. Uh, these, uh, oh, a gentleman sent me, and I, I wish I had your name out. Uh, I'll get you on the next video. I'll, I'll tell them who, who it was. A, a guy had emailed me a couple weeks ago, and, uh, or a week ago or something even. He says, hey, I hear you're looking for some 2100 2, parts. And uh, I got a couple things. He says, I'll send them to you if you give me an address. I says, oh, okay. I didn't think anything about it. Well, next thing I know, Saturday morning rolls around, and I get this chance on the box. I'm used to that. I open it up, and boom, there it is. A complete 2100. Uh, it's trashed. It's, it's, not, it's a non-running saw. Thank you so much for that 2100. And I'm going to tell you why. I gained a flywheel and a starter and everything I needed. I cleaned a carburetor on mine and the darn thing's running. Okay, I'm not done yet. I've got a manual oiler issue. It's getting gas in. Uh, when you use the plunger, it gets gas in the bar oil. Okay, we have a fix to that. I've learned, you guys know Kenzie from uh, Bio Country Power Saws. I have yet to stump him on something. I says, and this guy's like 30, you know, come on, how much can he know? He knows everything. He knows how to find the information out. That's the difference between him and us old guys. Uh, he knows how to find things out. And he told me, in the bottom of my plunger, there's a spring, and then there's another piece of the plunger that's got uh, a nipple onto it, 
apparently like a flat O-ring you can't get any more. When that O-ring's gone and um, uh, saws like that, it pumps gas instead of oil. Okay, Kenzie, thanks a lot. We're on top of it. Them saws like that are my personal hobby. I do them on a weekend. You know, I build you guys a saw during the week. Chris, the Christmas elf, is going to be helping. What do you think of that? Isn't this amazing? Uh, I understand we may have a few more special guests show up for Christmas. Well, I'm not exactly sure on that yet, but I have heard rumors. Stay tuned, folks. It's going to be a fun year.